So let's move on. Then we start with Joana Correia. Uh, we'll talk about typography, which is a key point on any project or website. We have Joana. Okay. She she has been crafting typefaces since 2011, collaborating with big names like Google Fonts and Monotype. So, Joana, feel free to start. Thank okay. you. Yeah, this is going to be fast, so I hope uh, I can manage to answer some of your questions because I know it's not a, such a common theme. As you, of course, know, design is super important for what you do as well and to have a good uh, result for, you know, people to use the website. And typography is one of the, the main issues. And I'm sure that many times, most of the times, uh, clients don't really care so much about the fonts, but how fast it is. And I understand performance is important, but we'll talk about that as well, because there's a few things that uh, can be improved. But of course, I'll be talking more about design. Yeah, I'm from Porto. I'll skip this part a bit. She already presented me. Um, yeah, since 2011 that I work with fonts. Um, so yes. Uh, so I'll try to bring some ideas how to choose the fonts and uh, how to you know make it work for the website and how to have some tips on how, where to find them and how to navigate in this uh, strange world of fonts. I mean, they're there, <laughs> we know we, we use them every day, but we don't really sometimes understand how to assess the quality and what, if it's working, if it's not working, why is it so important to have, uh, you know, to care for which fonts are you using? Um, one thing that I thought was interesting, as you saw, like, for example, the BBC uh, website, and many big clients, they should have their own fonts, <laughs> like their custom fonts, and BBC does have that. Why, does, why do they have that? Because they need to talk in many, many different languages for around the world. So they need the, the same font to be in all these languages. And so if you ever have like a big, big client, make sure they have their own fonts, because it's a really important thing to have for branding and also for performance because then you have you can talk to everyone in the same uh, quality so when you're choosing a typeface yeah one of the main things and also for portuguese you need the accents now you need to have a cedilla that works you need to have uh, the letters that are working for all the languages and this happens so many times and still does you know you can see oh this is not working or the font changes or it changes to a default so definitely language support will be super important for your websites yeah if it's not working that's not going to communicate properly uh legibility of course and then we'll see uh just a, a few examples of things so language for example this is using uh, uh cyrillic this was made with yeah, it's one of my fonts, but it also shows it's like sp specific design issues that can bring branding. Now, so that's OT features. That means that the font has some more capabilities that can create a uh, different design. But also the language is super important. In this case, it was like a German website also for Russia <laughs> at the time was 2020, before 2020. So they needed the font to speak in different uh, languages now for around the world, which is a, which is amazing. And as a type designer, I've worked with different languages, not just Cyrillic, but Greek or uh, Indic scripts as well. Uh, so alternates can also create like different uh, visual, like one font can have many styles and they can look like one thing. And then if you change uh, the features, it can change the, the letters. This is just uh, other examples. Also to be careful about how many weights the font has. So uh, if it's going to be, you know, thin to black, the width is also important in a website. Usually you need to be more condensed or you need the text to work. And it's not just about the typeface, but also typography so typography is more the use of the text and it needs to be like not very long lines and well that's the design kind of part but it's important to have a good working font with different styles so then you can be flexible when you're using uh, on the layouts uh, italics as well usually so then combinations that's the hard part nobody knows how, how am I going to put them together because you 
you kind of don't know how. But they're starting to appear more tools about this, and I'm not I don't have it for the website because uh, for the presentation because it's a very new thing. It's called the monotype font pairing. If you go on on the internet, they have an AI tool <laughs> that they created now to the like the tool is learning the preferences of the designer of two different typefaces for titling and for text so you can kind of click and you, you random changes and shows the fonts and you can then of course go and follow and see which font it is i'm just showing examples of how to use good in a good way <laughs> typography um i searched for i tried to search for wordpress uh, you know, based websites or things like that, just to show that you can have different combinations of fonts, uh, a sans serif, which is without the little fit, and of course, serif fonts for text usually. Um, like that one is, a, that's a sans, but it has like some details that makes it more readable. And for, of course, for bigger size, you can play a bit more, you can be more expressive and, and have different kind of fonts. So the size matters, the way you're going to use the font, how big it is. Uh, I always have a complaint to a newspaper in Portugal that has a really bad web font, uh, Espresso, in the, for mobile, because they use a font with too much contrast, which means that the, the, the thin parts are very thin for, for screen, for small screen, and it doesn't make any sense. I already made many complaints to them, and they Okay, I understand the font is not bad. It's just that it doesn't work when it's in smaller sizes. So those things are very important. But uh, my idea is to show you that it's possible not to use just Helvetica, Open Sans, and the same fonts all the time. So looking for more identity, and if the client has that possibility of having a custom font, which means that it was designed for them, which for big companies, it's possible. It's not that expensive. Um, but of course, for the the smaller websites and people don't have so much budget, but it's still possible to make something look nice and balanced with the you know bolds, italics, and having uh, another font. This is one of my favorite web fonts, um, uh, Optim uh, Prosima Nova, on the text in the bold because it works super good on the text as well in small. So it's like one of the most used uh, web fonts. Uh, yeah, since it was one of the first real web fonts, and it's still very used today. It's all used in the, in the whole website, but it works because it's very clean, it's very nice. So you can do with just one font, <laughs> but you might try to pair it with others. Uh, of course, if you need more identity, you know, websites will have like a, a different one for the text with serifs, and it's something more... It shows also the personality of the website. You don't want, you know, this website to look uh, the same as others. Like Fast Company uses a very nice display font, kind of, you know, narrow, so it can fit all the the lines. And then a sans uh, in the text, so it makes the, the nice balance. So we come to that part where, how does this work? Because everybody's like just using Google Fonts because it's safe, it's for free, <laughs> it's easy to not to mess up. And I don't know if anyone here ever had a problem about licensing fonts. Like, have you ever had a company call you, ah, you're using my fonts and you're not paying for them correctly? <laughs> so I see one face. And this can happen and more in the future. I can tell you there's a big company, one of the bigger companies, Monotype, they're doing a lot of license enforcement, which means that they're uh, going after especially bigger companies. They don't go after like small websites. But the thing is that if you don't license properly, you're not you know, giving enough money to the designers, which is us, but also to maintain uh, the industry going. So where, where can you do it? As you already know, most of the things right now are turning into subscription models. So it's becoming easier to be compliant. It's like music, no? Before nobody paid, now everybody has a Spotify uh, subscription and you're all compliant with that. So that's the idea for fonts. That's what they've been doing. With Adobe fonts, if you know, designers use the tools, the fonts who are in, that are inside of Adobe are licensed already. Not for every use. You might need to upgrade if it's a really, really big project, but you can get in touch and 
try to get that font. Uh, there's other, you can do it directly with the foundries, with a small, you know, freelancer, small company. But usually people prefer just to have something bigger. Monotype also has a subscription model now. And it's easy, you can get the whole library uh, and you can do whatever you want for your commercial work, which is much, much better because you pay a, a value a month and you get a lot of things and it's all covered in terms of licensing and you don't get that call you're using my font imp improperly and it happened to me I had to do that but I'm not a lawyer so it's you know I, my company is small I also have a foundry but the big ones they have a big bunch of lawyers just to deal with this but you have to think about yeah the small ones they don't have the money to have a lawyer and to do this so they lose we lose a lot of money all the time because people don't license the fonts as they should uh, of course, Google Fonts is an alternative. It's it's open. It's open source. Uh, it's great. Uh, you can use uh, all the fonts, but you don't want to see your website <laughs> looking the same as every website using the same fonts all over again. So identity and also quality. Uh, Google Fonts serves many of the languages now. You can have in different languages open source fonts, which is great if you really don't have the budget and need uh, language support. Um, Adobe also has, but not so much. So I would say Google, they did invest a lot in putting, making that. Um, so yeah, the idea of the subscription font stand is another one that offers by subscription and also for renting, like you can just test fonts and you can test them for hours just to see if they're good, if you like it or not. So that's good. Uh, foundries, like this is a friend from Porto that also has a foundry. And he has one of the fonts that was in the Fast Company website. He's very, very good in like more like newspapers, everything that is editorial, but online things like they really work well in the online environment. And yeah, this is my own <laughs> foundry in Adobe fonts. So if you that's what happens is the same thing as Spotify. So if you synchronize the fonts of the foundries through Adobe, I get some money. You know, you get royalties. So that's how it works. It's the same thing as Spotify. Don't get so much, but we're not, uh, <laughs> you know, we're not artists and the fonts don't sync like so much. Some fonts, of course, sync more than others. And that's where you get the money. So it is a good, it is a good deal for, for us uh, designers and also for, for users, you know, for you designing and for, for people designing. With Monotype, there's also like this idea as well of the, of having a subscription. That's FontStand. FontStand is an app that also has it, um, it's a desktop app. One thing that is important for you and I can imagine is that when you use these services, you don't get the files. You have to do it under the CSS rule and it's there. So it's not on your server. You're not gonna have the fonts with you. But that's actually good because if the fonts are updated, if something is wrong with them, they will uh, do it automatically. Uh, so that's that's really good. Yeah, of course, you know, Google fonts and they do have a lot of uh, information online on Google design. You can find about font pairings. You can find out about uh, typography a bit more. But then we get to this idea of the variable fonts, which is performance. It, it was designed, it's a, it's a format. So uh, typefaces, they come, they're a software. No, they're a little piece of software, OTF, TTF, and in this case is the VFX, uh, if I'm not wrong. Uh, so variable fonts, it's a new format. Okay, so what it allows, it's actually for making smaller <laughs> file, so it doesn't need so much time to be loaded. And what you will get inside of the, of the variable font, usually it's the full range of weights. So it's like you have the slider, no? You can just go up and down and the font changes the weight, changes the width, it depends on the design. So it will be something, uh, it was, <laughs> a variable fonts was, very pushed by Google fonts, as you can imagine, for Google to have better performance with the fonts, that was their goal. They just wanted to have them work better. Uh, and they do, and they do serve on Google fonts. You already have variable fonts, uh, which is just, again, a new format. Adobe also provides uh, variable fonts now. Not, every, not all fonts have it, 
But for bigger families, if you have a huge family, for a newspaper, for example, you want to use variable fonts because then you can track exactly the weight you want, the width you want. And if in the, I think with responsive websites, you can already kind of, you know, change when you change for mobile or for bigger screen, you can change the, the shape of the, of, the, of the letter, but not like you're distorting it because it's already designed this way. So it's going to work well. And that's really, really the best part of the um, variable fonts. Also very, a lot of information on this, on Google design, where they show how can you do it. You might find some unusual variations like letters that there's one, uh, some that don't have serifs and then you change and it grows serifs. And uh, that's also, people have done a lot of experiments with, with, uh, with variable fonts. So this is a website where you can see some of the beginning uh, when it started to come out, this, this format. It's very recent, so that's why it's not completely uh, used yet. But if you have this problem of, of performance and you really want it to go fast, you should use tri variable fonts because it's going to be so much better. It's one, instead of having like this huge amount of files, you will have one file that has everything inside and much, much lighter. So here you can kind of test them out. In, in, uh, in Adobe as well, there's already, you can search just for variable fonts and try them out. There's again, not all families. Uh, in the company I'm working, we're still producing variable fonts for families that already existed to, to make them lighter and more usable. Even though I think it's still not very known and people need to learn more about it and test it to make them more, more uh, you know, more popular. Um, I don't have, I have the Google knowledge, that's what I wanted to show. The Google knowledge, I don't have the page here, but it's the page where it really has a lot of information. So Google knowledge, fonts, Google fonts knowledge, you will find a lot of good links about variable fonts. That's for sure. Yes. So I, I open more for questions because I know uh, I'm I'm your you know, I have this I am the source of the knowledge about fonts, but I'm not so inside of what you as uh, designers, uh, developers need to know. So I'm open for questions. Any question is valid. So please. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. Questions. No questions. Any or if questions? you want to share your, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Thank you for a great presentation. I'm curious. Um, there was a definition, no, a differentiation earlier, uh, some decades earlier, probably too. Uh, use sans serif or serifs for web use mm -hmm. and the opposite for print. Uh, yeah. Would that still be true with what's current or? Now As it's you, less relevant. Yeah. You've seen on the on the on the websites that it was showing both serifs and and sans serifs because the screen rendering became so much better now that it's possible to draw like almost reproduce what you do by print on the on the internet but as i was saying you know the espresso font they use this one that has too much contrast so it's very thin it has some uh, it's not so comfortable for your eyes so you still need to think about that we call it, uh, it's like an ergonomy for fonts. Now you need to, to really look at it and think, oh, is this comfortable reading? Is it make my eyes like twitch or not? And it can be a sans or a serif. It doesn't matter so much. And most of the fonts today are designed thinking about the web as a, mo you know, a preferential use. So they will have some uh, text weights. Usually when they say it's a text weight, it's because it has a bit less contrast, so it's not so shiny. Shiny means that the white comes off too much, you know, when you have, but you can also use a very display thin font for a bigger size. So if it's used on big size, it's okay, but you're not going to put it in small because nobody can read it. But you can play with it definitely uh, in the text if you choose well. That's why choosing the fonts is so important and knowing where. I have an extra tip I forgot to give, but if you want to learn more like understanding a bit more of fonts and new fonts, there's a couple of newsletters that are for free and you can follow. One is Fresh Fonts, 
and she kind of puts out uh, ev- she shows the good the work that has been done and also you know gives some descriptions of the fonts and tells you what they are good for so that's kind of a way to learn uh, and know of the fonts another one is called pimp my type which is uh, very funny it's a german guy and he does it like font friday he also gives away fonts so some of these newsletters give away some fonts sometimes uh, from foundries and from other people and it's called yeah it's called pimp my type and font friday so he has some really nice resources and shows again font pairings he shows how to pair the fonts together and so it gives Good some tips. ideas yeah any more questions any more question here 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 okay. <laughs> we have to so, joana um does uh, variable fonts are already a uh, standard for web? No, yes, yes, yeah. you can use them for sure. It's uh, that, That's what I mean. Uh, it's because it is uh, still recent, not all fonts are done with variable format, but you can find some on Google, you can find some on Adobe and to try them out. But yes, it's already standard. And then I think in the CSS, you need to, you can say, for example, in the regular weight, I want it to be 300 or 400 because there will be a range that you can choose from, but you can do it, yes. Yeah, it's totally usable already. It's, it's supported in, the, in most uh, web browsers. It wasn't at first, but now it is, yeah. I mean, maybe not all of the web browsers, you have to check, but for sure in Google and, and uh, uh, in Chrome and in Safari and Mozilla, I think so. I think they should be used. Okay. More questions? Anyone? Here. No? No? Okay. So thank you, Joanne. Thank you. Here. <laughs>